Now we're going to get into some of the bad things that happen when you get drunk. Turn, if you would, to Genesis chapter number 9. It's the first example that we have in the Bible of someone being drunk. It's Moses, it's, no, Moses Noah. Genesis yeah, 9, a little too early for Moses. Genesis 9 is an interesting story. Now the words of the Lord are pure words and he's never going to give us more detail than we need to know. And that's why oftentimes, even when you read the law, there's a lot of euphemisms to use. There's a lot of things, that language that's used to let you understand what he's talking about without going into graphic detail about what it is because a lot, a lot of times it's just they're perverted things anyways. So when you read in God's laws, talking about like uncovering the nakedness of somebody, it's not just referring to the fact that like maybe some clothing is removed. It's referring to more than that. So it's referring to people having like a relationship with someone they ought not to have a relationship with. And it's kind of uncovering or discovering their skirt or just, you know, these types of, uh, uh, this type of language is used to, to let us know about that without God having to go into any more detail than he needs to. And we keep that in mind as we read Genesis chapter 9 with this story. After Noah gets off of the ark, what happens to Noah? He ends up getting drunk. Let's look at verse number um, 18. The Bible says, And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And you notice right, right off the bat, you see Noah, what does he do? He gets drunk, and then he's uncovered, right? He's, he's just naked. And nakedness all throughout the Bible is associated with shame. It is a shame to have that nakedness. And we see here, and, and as I mentioned before, there's no coincidence in Deuteronomy 32 where we started off, Talking about their vine is the vine of Sodom, their wine is the poison of dragons. Well, Noah's drinking their wine. Noah starts partaking in this poison. And he ends up passing out in his tent. And he doesn't even have his clothes on. Verse number 22 says, And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without and Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. So again, it's, it's being very discreet in the way that what's being told to us here, the events that actually happened. And I believe this firmly that Ham, the father of Cain, remember, the Canaanites were a wicked people. And that's why it's bringing up the fact that Ham is the father of Canaan. When the children of Israel go in to possess the land of Canaan, and they're given the law, given God's law in Deuteronomy and in Leviticus, God's telling them, ultimately he's telling them, you know what, you're not getting this land because of how great you are. But God's bringing judgment on the people of that land because they did all of those things that were written in the law. And it's right after he gets done telling them about, you know, like Leviticus chapter 20. And it's talking about the sodomy and the bestiality and all the weird things, the incest, all stuff. He said, the people landed all these things. So they're extremely wicked. The Canaanites, the land of Canaan. Now, there were other countries and other nations around at that time. They weren't as wicked as that nation was. And the Bible is specifically telling us here that Ham is the father of Canaan. Now, you can say, well, I think this still just means that, you know, he saw him and then he gets his brothers, you know, says so they, they walked in backwards. They didn't see their father's nakedness and they cover him up. Right. And that's how it reads. But the reason why I think more happened than him just kind of stumped, because where would the sin be on that? If you're, if you're a son and, you're, and your dad's passed out drunk and he's naked and you just go walking over to dad's house, you walk in, you're like, whoa. 
There's no sin in just stumbling in on something at random and you're just like, whoa, well, hey, we got we to gotta fix this. And then you go in back you know, and cover them up. That would not deserve like a generational curse as we're going to see happened here to him and on his descendants. He said, this, th there's no way that you're going to then wake up and be like, you're so cursed. I can't believe you came into my room and you saw me. To your own child, your own son. Let's keep reading here because it says in verse number 24, and Noah woke from his wine. He was passed out from the wine. He woke, the wine finally went out of him. He woke up and knew what his younger son had done unto him. It doesn't say he knew what his younger son had seen. He had to have done something to him. And look at the response that was evoked, verse 25. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And he curses Canaan because of what his son had done unto him, not because of what he had seen. 